You are back with Get Connected. Mike and John here. Well, you know the saying, winter is coming. Well, in Canada, I think winter is here (laughs) in many parts. And uh, as such, it's important uh, that we're prepared, especially when we're driving. Uh, A lot of places uh, in Canada, uh, winter tires are a must. But what kind of technology goes into tires themselves? Well, to help us understand, uh, we've got a great guest from Michelin today. His name is Farrell Scott, or Farrell Scott. Thanks for joining us, Farrell. Nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, just before we get going, what's your title over there besides tire guy? Yeah, <laughs> it's, I'm a product category manager, uh, specifically in the winter category, um, but I also covered uh, BF Goodrich and Unirola products as well. So let's talk about winter tires and technology. I, I don't think people you know, always associate tires with technology, but uh, tell us how uh, that comes into play uh, with uh, your, your Michelin tires. Yeah, yeah, I guess. So um, if you start at the, excuse me, a very high level, um, obviously we're about providing uh, a better way forward from a mobility standpoint. Tires are a part of, a part of that offer that we have in addition to other services that we provide as well. Um, and obviously we feel uh, tires are a very key part of um, allowing people to move, especially in vehicles. Um, and so as a result of that, particularly in winter, we know winter comes with its own challenges, right? And so as a result of that, we try to deliver, uh, and we feel that we have delivered products to help people overcome or address those winter challenges, those different conditions, their experience. And a part of what we've been able to do recently, obviously, is to develop a winter tire, a premium winter offer, to be able to refresh what was already in the market uh, in the form of our Excise 3 and our Latitude Excise 2. So again, we know uh, from consumers and dealers and feedback that Picking uh, tires or buying tires are not always a fun thing to do, right? They come with a lot of uh, uh, challenges and a lot of information uh, that could be a little bit of a challenge. So we try to make that easy by providing a product, again, that um, is addressing things that we've heard uh, that consumers want in a product. And so when you, when you look at the actual tire itself, like what, what kind of technology is involved yeah. in uh in making it a, a winter tire? Yeah, so good question. Um, so obviously, uh, tires typically are, uh, in all categories, obviously have rubber, right? Natural rubber, synthetic rubber, uh, introduce oils, right? Um, and of course, carbon black, right? Uh, are some of the basic components. But really, the differentiation for winter uh, from some of the other categories is really the winter compound itself. As I mentioned, you have the oils and things like that, but you typically introduce silica as well because you want that product to be flexible in extreme cold temperatures. So silica is an an added benefit or a key uh, product that allows you to have that flexibility in a winter product. Why do you need that flexibility? Because when it gets cold, again, you don't want your rubber compound becoming brittle and cracking because it's past uh, a polymer will experience uh, a transition in the glass transition temperature. So there's a glass transition temperature where polymers turn from being flexible to being brittle and potentially can crack. And as a result of that, because they're not flexible in, in contact with the surface, you lose that level of traction in your contact patch. Right. So that is the key aspect of a winter tire is to have a compound that has materials that allow it to lower the temperature that the tire can still be flexible okay and so that's the one aspect of it is the compound but then you also have the design of the tread or the the the, the sculpture of what you see and typically for winter tires you have a high level of what's called sipes right those are cuts or slits in the in your in your tread blocks that allow those to become biting edges so as those sipes come in contact with the road or the surface they open up so the block, in essence, opens, and those become biting edges on surfaces like for snow and for ice, right? And so that's where you have that traction that you want. So you typically have more biting edges on the surface of the tire due to siping. And there's different types of siping you can introduce, depends on the level of functionality or the level of traction that you're obviously trying to gain with your product. 
So siphoning is key. And then you have what's uh, typically you want an open tire or void, a void ratio to allow you to be able to evacuate snow, slush, rain, and those types of elements that are winter to be able to evacuate that from the contact patch or where the tire comes in contact with the road. You want to be able to evacuate those elements from the surface again so that you can have that maximum contact of the tire to the road. So having a more open tire uh, or more void ratio in the tire is key for winter tire as well. So those are like the some of the main elements that differentiate a winter tire from the all season and summer. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> um, I never knew there was so much about tires. <laughs> no, it, it, it makes a lot of sense the way you've explained it. It's great. Um, can you just sort of explain, because one of the big questions that we've talked about fairly recently, Mike and I, is we've got like the mud and snow tires. How is that different than a winter tire? Yeah, yeah, no, good question. So so one thing about uh, the mud and snow tire is that's the M plus S. That's the designation that um, really has no winter performance measurements associated with it. It's literally the design of the sculpture or the tire. So in other words, uh, for mud and snow, it was really uh, an expectation that um, you, if you look at the older tires um, that basically had the circumferential grooves, right, that basically did not have the blocks or siping or anything like that. So M plus S was just a designation to say, hey, in your molds, you need to have this level of void ratio on the surface of the tire. That's what distinguishes it for, uh, to make it mud plus snow. But then you also had to have a certain level of angles of your block. So instead of just your normal cir circumferential grooves that ran around the tire, you had to now start to angle the blocks. So it allowed you to be able to not just stay on a straight, flat surface, but be able to navigate off-road. So mud plus snow was more a visual uh, indication that you didn't have just your traditional circumferential grooves running around the tire. You now had block angles that were changed angles to allow you to have that level of traction off-road, right? And then Three Peak Mountain Snowflake, because mud plus snow is designated for traditionally most of the tires uh, in today's market, Three Peak Mountain Snowflake was an international standard introduced for at least uh, the snow traction, and they're calling it severe snow traction, to meet a minimal standard for uh, snow traction um, for a tire um, against a reference tire, right? And that reference tire was an all-season tire, right? And so every tire in the industry to reach a three-peak mountain snowflake uh, minimum level needed to spin at a certain traction on a certain surface, right? A packed snow surface. So that is where you get the three peak mountain snowflake designation. And so a winter tire will obviously have a higher level of snow traction to have the three peak mountain snowflake. But one key differentiation is not every all season, all weather or summer tire may not have necessarily a three-peak mountain snowflake uh, certification attached with it. And just because it has a three-peak mountain snowflake uh, certification doesn't mean it's a winter tire because it means it only met the minimum requirement just for snow traction. And we know winter is much more than just snow. It's ice, it's slush, and it's all those other performances that you don't have to test to get that level of certification. <laughs> I'm just blown away by all the uh, the things that are going into uh, these tires. Um, have you noticed much change over the past ten years or or further, like on on the winter tire technology? Like what what major advancements have happened? Yeah, so so obviously um, for winter, there we we try to listen obviously, and we do listen to consumer feedback, right? And so uh, and dealer feedback, and obviously the use of our product. So, you know, typically what we hear and what we see and experience even in our testing is that there is an expectation um, that 
typically driving behavior in snow, um, depending on the level, um, you typically augment your, your driving behavior, but typically that's not enough to potentially, depending on the climate and the conditions, of course, to stop you or discourage you from driving. But typically for ice, that's something that people have much more fear about trying to, because there's a level of control you don't have. So being able to improve that ice traction um, is really something that is key without sacrificing your snow traction, of course, as well, which you expect day in and day out. Obviously, uh, that snow uh, and slush, especially slush, being able to navigate in and around slush as you change lanes or you get off exits and things like that are also very key. So trying to find the balance of snow versus ice and really trying to improve performance in both is really something that winter tire technology has improved in for sure. Because, um, you know, historically they were called snow tires, right? Only focusing and looking at, uh, you think on the, around snow performance, because again, people felt like, oh, with ice, I can't necessarily uh, have that same level of control or confidence in being able to drive on ice. Who knew there was so much in tire tech? We've uh, been talking with uh, Pharrell Scott. We'll call him the tire king now. Uh, this uh, has been very, <laughs> very enlightening. Uh, where can people find out more information about this? Yeah, so typically uh, there's um, what we call uh, influencers or others that uh, test and evaluate uh, tires, third parties. Um, that we have a very good relationship uh, with and obviously try to establish correlation of performances and developing new products as well. So there's tire, de- tire dealers typically on their website will have information. Obviously on Michelin.com, uh, we have uh, more tire information uh, that you can um, find out about our products and then also just general tire information as well with links to other uh, good sources of information as well. And of course, you can always uh, reach out to get connected, it appears to <laughs> get more information. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, uh, for all. Thank you for having me. Uh, I've enjoyed it and uh, happy driving, safe driving. And uh, thank you for again for allowing me to speak today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page. And you know that little bell icon? Hit that and you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And comment. The more comments and the more likes and subscriptions we get, the more videos we can make.